here we go. I'm live. I just realized I haven't uh, set up my whiteboard, but it's okay because I'll just point my thingy, my camera here. Welcome, guys. If this is your first time to my channel, uh, please consider subscribing, hitting that like if you feel you've got some value from this lesson. Today's lesson is how to solo on a dominant blues only using three strings. So if you're like... Uh, trying to learn how to solo and put those improvisations together on guitar, uh, then really maybe you are over-egging everything all at once because part of the kind of guitar player mentality is that you must know all your scales in all positions. You must know all your chords. You must know all this stuff and the pre- uh, requisite is that you knew all this kind of stuff, but really at the end of the day, what are we trying to do? You know, we're making music, man. We're making music. That's what we're about. We're about. So do you need much music, uh, many notes to make music? No, you don't at all. Okay, guys. Hiya. How are you doing? So the thing is, today's lesson is I'm just going to use three strings. And the reason I'm going to use three strings is because I just want to exploit one area of the guitar and just get to know that, get familiar with it. You know, if you get familiar with these uh, things, then what will happen is is you will learn them and they will become intrinsic to your uh, to your playing. So here we go. The first part we are going to look at here is we've got um, the dominant blues uses three chords, essentially. So we've got – I'm going to play this little shape here. It's a cool little shape. Don't worry about – Writing anything down, I will provide a handout at the end. I will put a PDF in the description. Now, this, if you look at that, guys, look at that. It's a D shape. It looks like a D shape, but it's on the uh, the D, the G, and the B strings at the fifth fret that here. Because I'm going to do this in A, in the good old key of A. And I like to just give it a little bit, a bit of summer. It sounds for me the blues is is the sound of the of the railroad and all that sort of stuff. It's the mysticism of the, the going to the crossroads and all that. So for me, making that chord sound like a train really kind of gets, gets the juices going because what you've got to do is you've got to go there up here first. You can't expect to play the blues without thinking, you know, getting there. So just doing that it just sets me off. So, so the first thing that I'm going to do, the first pattern I'm going to show you is this. And this is a fragment of a major pentatonic pattern. If I play the full box, then that gives you some context to the pattern. It also outlines the chord. So you can see the chord lives there. So the, this is the pattern I'm thinking about here, which is essentially, if we think about it in shapes, uh, then we get a lovely little triangle here, and we get a rectangle on top. Cor corner of the rectangle, corner of the rectangle, corner, corner. So that's G string, sixth fret, B string, fifth and seventh, thin E string, fifth and seventh. So if I play this chord, you can hear those notes fit perfectly. Now, just to kind of stress something here is that what generally happens with a with a blues is most people will go for go for that minor pentatonic, and it actually it it that can sound good in certain moments, but it's kind of the wrong scale for the chord, really, especially when you are just coming into the, you know, the, the whole thing. Now, remember, because this here, this is your uh, third of the chord, yeah, this is the fifth, and this is the root. So if I wallop that third at first, then I'm hitting the emotion note. That's the money note. So I'll get that, that bad boy there. That's really going to 
hammer home that chord. Now, I played around with a little bit with the minor there, so that's borrowing from the minor. This brings me into the other two chords, and this is kind of a safety way of playing it. If I play chord four, and you can see the chord four looks like a backwards D7 chord. The, the, the curio curious thing about this shape here, it's a C shape. It's a C shape. If I take away the pinky, you can see that's a C shape. I put the pinky back on, take away the first finger, you can see I get this D7 chord. And it actually looks like this D7 chord over here as well. So look at that. Look at that. It's the same shape. Just stick it over here. Now, the thing is, I'm going to use this for my chord four. And then I'm going to move that up two frets to play chord five. So essentially, chord one, chord four, chord five. These are nice little chords to just put in there. So essentially, for the solo, for the lead, I'm going to use the three strings. Like I said, the G, the B, and the thin E string here. Now, that major pentatonic idea that I'm playing there, that works on chord one. So essentially, the rule is, whenever that chord one happens, that's the scale you use. So when I went to chord four, I preempted it. And what I did then is I changed to the minor. Now, the minor, essentially, what we're going to do is we're only going to use half of our beloved A minor pentatonic or A minor blues, whichever way you want to look at it, which is 8-5 on the thin E string, 8-5 on the B string, 7-5 on the uh, G string. So those are the three strings we're going to use for chords 4 and 5, and then for the uh, for the chord 1, we're going to use... Now, what you can do is it's kind of nice to just sitting around picking and just listening. Yeah. And this is the thing. It's a listening exercise just as much as it is a playing exercise. And what you do is you kind of preface any sort of noodling that you're going to do around the scale with the chord to establish the mood, the feeling. So essentially, here I go. I'll do that slide in on that chord one. <laughs> to establish the, the mood, the vibe, and then I'll play the scale. And you could do this free time. You know, you don't need to have a click or anything. Here's chord four. There's chord four. Go back to chord one. To the chord one there and what i'm doing is i'm just switching between those i'll go to chord five four chord one So you can see there, I can, I, I can switch this around to be uh, 12 bar blues and 8 bar blues and no bar blues. It's up to you. You can hammer it whichever way you like. But the idea is stick with that chord one there. So for chord one, just to summarize when you're soloing on this, six on the G string, five and seven on the B string, five and seven on the thin E string, when you're playing on chord four, which is this D7, and the, the chord five, which is the E7, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use five, seven on the G string, and then we're gonna use five and eight on the B string, five and eight on the thin E string. And the funny thing is, is they both blend, and if you uh, look in my other videos, I did one on the, uh, the kind of voodoo blues scale, check out that video, because that gives you something else in it. You can kind of mix these ideas. So I kind of think of this as being minor, and this as being a major idea. And you can take this major and bend it up a semitone or a half step to this note here. And you can do it on this one as well. And if you play them together, 
You get that kind of, it says dorian -y pattern. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, it's used on a Chuck Berry. Chuck Berry used that pattern all the time. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to mingle and merge the two together and blur the lines between between them. I hope that's been useful, but essentially you're only using this little area. Get to know there. Do your bends. Right. Okay, then, guys. Um, if uh, this is your first time, like I said at the beginning of this lesson, then consider subscribing. If you've got some value from this, please wallop that like button. If you have not enjoyed this video in one way or, or another, then please wallop that dislike button twice for me, please. Right, that would be fantastic. If you have any questions, leave us a comment below. Thank you for turning up in the super chat. Uh, nice to see some new people. Slice, nice to see some uh, of my familiar people. Uh, on the fourth chord, you need to find a lesson on the fourth chord, Team Jalen. Right, well, uh, the, the fourth chord, the chord four, it depends uh, what, you, what you're thinking about how to use that. Um, if you uh, enjoyed that as well, you might want to join my Facebook group over there. I'll put a, leave a link in the description as well. Don't forget, there's going to be a PDF down below as well, guys. So um, uh, I will see you next time, and take care, stay safe.